Thank you for coming to the Jackson Community Forum and welcome to the library. This series of presentations is brought to you by the League of Women Voters in partnership with the Jackson District Library. We are always looking for uh, relevant community concerns to reflect in our forum. So if you have any ideas of what you would like to see in the future, please let me know. I'm really excited that I have the opportunity to kind of highlight how the Jackson County Conservation District has a role in recycling within our county. So the Conservation District wears a lot of different hats. We do things from invasive species education and prevention, um, a big annual tree sale every year. We do an adopt just stream event um, a couple times a year. We have a meat technician and a engineer on staff um, who work with farmers um, to help make their farms more environmentally compliant. So we do a lot of things um, in the county. We wear a lot of hats for very small staff. So there's two um, pretty big events that the Conservation District um, holds that some of you may be um, familiar with. But one that has been growing in popularity is our tire collections. Okay, is anyone familiar with the tire collections that happen in the county? Nobody? One person? Oh my gosh, two people? Okay, the Conservation District um, applies for a grant every year through the state. Um, and it's a grant that we've been getting, I'd say, for quite some time now. Um, but the grant allows us to um, have different collections throughout the county. And so when we apply for the grant, we reach out to all the townships in the county and ask, who's interested in helping with this grant? And so I'm going to use a lot of the information from just this past year for 2019. So these are the um, townships that um, showed interest in who held a tire collection. Um, so we had roughly 12, I want to say, townships, which ended up being seven collections. Some of the townships like to group together. So for example, Grass Lake Norwell, Norvell and Napoleon grouped together to hold one tire collection. So anyone within those townships could go to that one collection. For any of the townships that didn't step up or say, hey, I'm interested, um, we do have one countywide collection for anybody who has tires that they need to get rid of. So with all of our collections, we collected just over 12,000 tires in 2019. Who knew there'd be so many tires just hanging out in our county, right? Yeah, so over 12,000 tires, which is pretty impressive. Tires are kind of one of those items um, that are kind of hard to get rid of and you're not really sure what to do with. So we find applying to this grant very beneficial every year. And I don't have facts and figures for all the past years that we've done it, but I just threw up a little graph here real quick to kind of show you in 2017, um, there was about 10,000 tires collected, and then 2018, just over 9,000, and then this year, just over 12,000. Um, so we've been seeing those numbers kind of fluctuate between those two numbers, um, but I've definitely noticed that this past year um, that it, we've been getting a lot more attention on it. I threw up some photos of kind of what our tire collections look like. So a lot of the people that help us with our collections are volunteers. So just anybody in the county here. And it's a very dirty job. <laughs> um, so no one leaves clean. Um, but basically these tires are, um, the purpose of the collection is tires that have been on someone's property for years and they're not sure what to do with them um, or if you change your own tires, whatever, whatever the case is, you can bring them to this collection. It's not meant for businesses. Um, and so we have all these pictures up here with all the tires. And you can see we're still smiling in the bottom corner. So it's a, it's a really great program um, and I did apply for the grant again for 2020 and so it will happen again for 2020. Um, so if you are interested um, in helping or learning more about that um, program that we offer. The second really big thing of how the district plays a role in recycling within the county is we host or do a household hazardous waste collection. This program isn't grant funded but is funded through the county. So the county gives 
the conservation district the money to hold this collection. And if you're unaware of what household hazardous waste items are, um, I have a list up here of some of the items that we were um, accepting this year. A lot of it is on the left, and then as you move further down on the right, it has a lot of electronic waste listed. But things from aerosol cans to medication and sharps, from paints to pesticides, all that stuff you're not really supposed to throw in your trash. Um, you can bring it to this collection and they will dispose of it correctly for you. The county only has money for one collection a year. And so because of that, we get a lot of people that come through. So it's a very busy day. We get a lot and a lot of hazardous waste items. This year, we collected 42,000 pounds of latex paint that were just hanging out. Um, 25,000 pounds of electronic waste, or e-waste is the abbreviated term for that. And then for household hazardous waste, 56,000 pounds. Yeah, so because we only have that one collection, we collect all this stuff in one day. So it's a pretty crazy day. <laughs> um, but we like to hold it because there is an importance to it. Um, we give the opportunity for folks in the county to come out and um, bring their items so they can dispose of it correctly. Outside from those two things, um, we, or myself, um, create a lot of educational materials um, for everybody. And I'm, like I mentioned before, I see most of you grabbed a lot of that stuff as you walked in, which is really great. Um, so the Recycling County Guide is something that I update every year. Um, and I'm in the process of updating it for the 2020 year. So you guys have the most, I guess, will be soon the most updated information soon and then um, i also put together a monthly newsletter um, that comes out through email so you don't get it in the mail it comes out through email the first of every month and that kind of highlights the different events that we are doing any um, update on recycling information and any just general information that's happening within our district um, so that's a really good way of staying up to date on stuff and i did bring us monthly um, sign up. Um, if you're interested in receiving those, make sure you drop your name down over there. Um, there is also a website that I manage that is solely on recycling within Jackson County. Um, so if you have access to a computer, um, definitely check out this website. I try to update it as the year goes on um, with more um, news or more up-to-date information. Um, it should also be listed um, on the recycling guide as well if you picked one of those up as well. Um, so we do a lot of that information. We also try to get out in the in the county at different events, like the learning fair. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that, but the learning fair, um, the Women's Expo, to try to get our materials out and educate. Educate, educate, educate is our biggest thing. Um, and again, that's why we're doing this tonight, is to get education out there. Where is the grant? <laughs> Is it state or federal grant? Yeah, so the grant is through the state, um, through the state of Michigan, and they per, they provide us the funds. We ask for a certain amount, and they'll either deny it or they'll accept it. And like I said, they've been um, accepting our request for... I want to know, so you collect all these hazardous waste materials mm -hmm. where do they go from once you get them where yeah do they go? yeah so um with the funds we we hire experts that know how to dispose of them um and one example of that is the latex paint um i can't remember the name of them but they are located in battle creek and they actually recycle that paint what is there a specific time that you have the hazardous waste day yeah i mean you know the Kentucky Derby is the first Saturday in May. Um, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so um, typically the household hazardous waste collection is um, in September. Um, I want to say it's the second or third month, third weekend in September every year. Do you guys take batteries? We sure do. Absolutely, all sorts of different types of batteries. What to the tires? Good question, yeah. So the tires that are collected, um, we have a specific hauler that collects the tires and then they recycle them. Um, so they are all recycled. This past year we were using Deer Path, um, which they then, I don't know the exact process, but they do 
create other materials out of them. Um, so they are definitely reused and repurposed. Uh, I'm probably not alone. I think many of us have medicines that we've either mm -hmm. uh, decided to not use or, mm -hmm. they're, they're, and they're still good medicines. Mm -hmm. Is there some way that we can recycle those without being a drug addict in as much as if you take them to the, to the police station, they're probably gonna be destroyed. There is a place called St. Luke's. Um, it's a, back behind Doctor's Hospital across the street. Is there? Yeah, okay. St. Luke's Clinic. Because I hate to just have them destroyed. Yeah, I take mine there. And that could be. Yeah, so that's all county funded. Okay. Um, so if they do, the folks there do see the importance of it. It's just the amount of funding that they have. Um, and I will say, if 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 you guys do want to see more of that, I mean, definitely speak up and let them know. Um, that you know, I wouldn't say it wouldn't hurt. I don't Enter know if it's gonna. Commission meetings. Correct. Yeah. So, good questions, everyone. My name is Charles Hauser. I'm the Community Relations Coordinator for Granger Waste Services. Um, I'm here today is to talk about recycling, kind of what we take, and um, how to kind of maintain clean uh, streams of recycling, because that's really a goal. Uh, between our company, several other, other companies, and even the state of Michigan, which is what you're seeing with that Recycle Raccoon campaign that has been coming out. We'll start with uh, some of the general items in terms of recycling. Uh, the general items are cardboard. Uh, everybody these days is getting cardboard. We call it the Amazon effect. Uh, you'll see at our, uh, our drop-off center that uh, we have several cardboard containers and just a couple containers for all the other uh, materials, but that's because every day someone's coming home and there's a package on their, uh, their porch. You know, so. uh, the other is single stream. So I say single stream, uh, and I say general recycling. Single stream is the new term of all of these different types of materials that can go into one container. So when we go to recycle this, that's usually what most people will get from a resident, is all of these items in one, uh, one bag or one container when it comes. So here's a process. Now I did a, a process, there will be another one after this, but I, I related it kind of to Jackson and Jackson, the city of Jackson, Jackson County as well. So you guys could kind of relate with this a little bit more. Uh, so we start with single stream. And we have the, the cardboard boxes. Please break them down. I know that there is a lot of effort sometimes into doing that, but we do ask that you break it down. It, it gives you more space, but it's also easier to, to uh, recycle and, uh, and process in that, that state. So underneath that, and I'll get to this a little bit later, but I say no pizza boxes. Uh, that's a big issue in terms of contamination that we see because there's, there's grease and there's cheese still left on the, uh, the bottom of the pizza box. Now, if you look at the top of the pizza box, it might be clean. You can rip the top off and put it in there, but just make sure that that bottom that still has grease on it does not go into your, uh, your recycling. No plastic bags is what I have there too. When I say no plastic bags, we'll see a lot of folks that will go to a drop-off center and they'll put, a, uh, they'll put their plastic bag, all their stuff's in the recycling, or the plastic bag, I'm sorry, and then throw the, the plastic bag in there as well. So uh, I'll get to this blue bag, that is a plastic bag, but I'll talk to you a little bit about that. But no pet food bags either. Uh, that's something that we do see in the stream, but that's not something that we uh, consider for Granger recyclable and for our processors don't want to see that as well. But things you will see, you know, dry, dry good containers, a uh, box board that is the granola bar up there, water bottles, uh, yogurt containers, sour cream containers, uh, your tin is uh, the soup cans, and then you know paper, newspaper, uh, junk mail, things of that sort. So you put that into a blue bag. This is the blue bag system, we call it. So you have one of our containers for your trash service, but a recycle service that we provide is a blue bag. You put your recycles in the blue bag, they go in the, the container, and then that goes in your normal garbage truck will come and pick that up. So there's a huge confusion out there, and it makes sense, and I understand it, is that we're getting told a lot that what we hear it just goes to the, the landfill. It's not actually getting recycled. So what I tell people a lot is you're more than welcome to come to our facility and I'll show you that it's actually getting bailed and uh, sorted and different things of that sort to be recycled uh, and then sent further on to get processed even farther. So again, this is called the blue bag system. This is usually a residential 
type of recycling. So I do a lot of uh, presentations. I go to workplaces. This is a new thing I kind of started was workplace recycling. Uh, but I also do a lot of uh, presentations for senior citizens at uh, their senior living facilities. We'll go to schools. I've uh, given presentations or tours to over 900 individuals this year. Because our goal is we want to clean the stream as the best as possible and educate folks on the right way to recycle. So this is an example of a workplace. So if they have cardboard in a workplace, uh, they can put it into a, a container within the office and then take it to one of our containers that they would have that's a cardboard only container. So then you can see on the other side you have a single stream. Single stream can go into a container at work and then go into a single stream container that will be picked up uh, eventually as well. So those are just examples. Now our facility here in Jackson is located on uh, Lansing Avenue. It looks like there's just a garbage truck that goes in there and dumps your trash and then you're, you're done. So that's what a lot of people think. It doesn't go to the recycling. But our floor is actually broken up into two spots. We have a trash floor, so the trash is dumped. We have individuals actually pulling the blue bags out. So they pull the blue bags out and they put them aside and then it gets transferred over to the recycling floor where they're opened and that single stream is put into a, uh, is sorted out, cleaned out a little bit and put into a, uh, a single stream pile. Cardboard separated in different spots and then down in this area is where we have uh, our different type of materials as well so they'll be sorted into different things but uh, most likely the single stream is actually going to get put into this baler. That's the blue thing in the middle, it's actually a baler so it'll go up there and it gets bailed and uh, those bales get put on a truck that go up to American uh, Waste and Recycling. And actually, we'll show you a little bit about that here in the future. So our Jackson facility, our 2018 total volume, we did uh, 10,194,360 pounds of recycling that came out of that facility. Uh, that's a you know, great job to you, to you folks. That's what we want to see. You want to see uh, uh, large numbers of recycling. We're starting to see more and more and more that uh, Recycling is becoming more important to folks. Uh, some of the accepted materials we have here, just to kind of give you a general outlook, is like a phone book, soft covered books, not hard covered books, uh, junk mail. So you'll see junk mail, uh, it has the window, right? The little plastic window. So in order to be a really good recycler, you can take that plastic out and then uh, dispose of the plastic, but the paper will still be uh, good. Uh, magazines. Newspapers and then copy paper can go as well. Now with copy paper, I warn people, make sure it doesn't have uh, important documentation on it. You'll shred that stuff first. Uh, preparation, move stickers out of magazines, string and twine. A lot of people will bring in magaz or, uh, put magazines together and tie it with the string. We'd like to see that removed because that's called a tangler. A tangler is going to get stuck in your recycling equipment and actually destro destroy the equipment. Uh, and then that twine's not recyclable as well. So uh, again, the plastic joint windows if you want to do that. So accepted materials, we have tin and aluminum. So I have your general tuna fish, sardines, your soup cans. Uh, I have uh, over here, you'll see they look like pop cans. You know, in the state of Michigan, we have the 10 cent deposit. So please do that first. Uh, over here, I said juice and energy drinks because those V8 juice cans, those are not uh, recyclable with that 10, or 10 cent deposit. And then the energy drinks don't have the 10 cent deposit either. So you can put those in your recyclables as an aluminum recyclable. Just make sure with all of these uh, that you clean them out. That's the first thing we want to see is clean it all out uh, the best you can. But again, make sure it's clean. That's the biggest thing. Contamination is one of the biggest issues uh, with recycling. Other accepted materials, box board is your cheese and boxes, your macaroni and cheese, your, your Quaker um, granola bars. Uh, that's the dry goods stuff. And then you look even in the office, you'll find some of that stuff with uh, the envelope containers, your staples and uh, paper clips as well. Preparation, try to remove any bags that are on the inside. Get that stuff out of there. Uh, and then break down and flatten the boxes, please. Uh, accepted materials, we have plastics. Uh, we kind of keep it general on this one because plastics are so confusing. I mean, this is one of the, the biggest issues we're also having is it's wish cycling. Everything that's plastic should be recyclable. I'm going to put it in there. Well, that's not the case. So we like to show people this is the general stuff you do definitely like to see because you're going to use this on a daily basis. Uh, that's your water bottles, yogurt containers, cottage cheese, 
sports drink bottles, milk jugs uh, as well. So you just do us a favor, clean them out the best you can, and you can uh, keep the caps out. Well, I have seen a thing where, yeah, the caps can't be recycled, and they also said, oh, you have to take the rings off. Then. Well, uh, our processor said to keep the caps on. Right. Uh, yeah, and they're gonna. They who, they said they couldn't be recycled. Somebody said. Yeah, that. that's after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. How clean is clean? <laughs> so I would say as clean as you can possibly get it. So it's more so that stink that's going to be on there, that that contamination. So that load, if it sits in your recyclables and then it goes to, uh, to our facility and sits there too for a little bit and it starts to really stink, that is considered contamination. And sometimes that can destroy an entire load of, of recyclables. So, uh, and it gets to the processor, they want to see that, don't want to see that either. So it might not get washed for a long time. And, and the reason I say that is, uh, I'll show you, a, there's a facility that we send our stuff to that's coming up. It's called a, a MRF, a Material uh, Recovery Facility. And they actually, they bail that stuff too. They separate it even further, and then they bail it, and then it goes to the processor. So it's sitting there, possibly. They don't wash it. There's not, they don't wash it. yeah, so it, it's gonna be there for a little while. Uh, eventually, the end user, the end user's gonna melt it down. They're gonna grind it up, and then they're gonna melt it down into ingots. And then those ink kits are going to go on and be melted into new products such as uh, more cans and things. So eventually that tuna fish will go away, but it's going to take a while to get to that point. On your cardboard, the brown cardboards you get coming up here, um, where do you send those to or do you shred them on site? Nope, we send those to American Waste and Recycling. So I'll show that uh, coming up here in just a second. So with the cardboard, again, break it down and flatten it. Uh, we'd love you to take the tape off, but you don't have to. You know, just the fact of flattening it down is, uh, is very helpful. Um, I, I use cardboard. I try to recycle it myself. I use it for mulch in my yard. Yeah. And, yeah. Do you let people come and get it from your facility to use for that purpose? Ah. Uh, Poor I need a source. <laughs> oh, you need a source? Yeah, yeah. I need a source. Oh, yeah. come see okay. us. Yeah, yeah, I, have boxes. Boxes. I have boxes. I don't that? I don't then come see us. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it probably wouldn't be an issue for us either, but we just don't want you jumping into the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> so re <laughs> Recycling Jackson would let me come and get there? Yes, we okay. would. Because there's actually a market for it. With, um, I, I grow fungus mushrooms, and you can shred it and use it to grow mushrooms on it. Yeah, so nice. Items that, that we say are not accepted. Uh, and you might not agree with us on some of this stuff, but I'm just going to say from Granger Waste Services point of view is that uh, uh, coffee cups and lids. We have uh, your freezer box meals, uh, your freezer pizzas. Anything that's in the freezer for us is because that is designed to keep the contents inside dry. Uh, so when you go to recycle those materials, there's a waxy coating or a pla or plastic coating on some of those and it won't break down the same way that uh, original box board or cardboard will. I would add to that like your cold beverage containers, cold your beverage containers, beer yeah. cases, pop cases, that type of thing. Yeah, so those have that waxy coating too because they're keeping those cans, you know, it, you don't want the box to break in a refrigerator. Uh, your plastic, so we're in plastic straws. Uh, down here I put the reduce, reuse, recycle. I mean, if you can, of course, try to reduce, you know, what you're using, but uh, try to reuse it first. Uh, when I go to elementary schools, I see a lot of cans holding pencils on the desk, which is really cool. So if you just think of uh, some ideas, or what are two different ideas. Yeah. Why not silverware? Just because it's easier to be contaminated or not? The plastic. So it's really small and it's a rigid plastic. Oh, it's a uh, plastic. So this is nationwide that they yeah. suggest don't use this. It's probably a mixed plastic. Yeah. So there's several different types of plastic in there. Mm -hmm. So the recycle it. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a certain reason why you guys don't recycle plastic straws? Because they're extremely small and it's made out of a plastic that's uh, not necessarily recyclable. Yes. And that's why you're starting to see bans all over the nation too related to straws. So uh, also not accepted, the plastic bags, the grocery bags. So we don't tell people necessarily to throw those away. You can reuse those 
in a lot of different ways. There's like beds you can make with them, but you could also reuse them in small trash cans. Uh, you can take them back to most grocery stores. We'll take them back. So they're a specialty, kind of a specialty item. And uh, these stores work with vendors who specialize in uh, making and recycling bags. So that's what we tell people. The trash bags, please don't put those in your recyclables uh, unless it's a blue bag program that we've told you to do that. And we know that there's recyclables in there. But those are called tanglers as well. So they're going to get tangled up in the equipment and, uh, and ruin it. Uh, styrofoam cups and containers, we don't take it. The Granger Way Services doesn't take it. Um, but we do recommend uh, taking it to like dark container uh, and there's some other facility. Emmons takes it if you drop it off. Okay, so or take it to Emmons if you have to <coughs> drop off center that'll take it. A couple questions. Um, when I used to have Granger as my uh, garbage service, I was never able to find the blue bags, but I checked Target and other stores. I don't know where you get the blue bags from. So Myers is supposed to have those Polly's blue bags. What's that? Polly's has them. And Polly's, and then uh, Amazon has them as well. If you want. We also sell them too at the conservation district. Okay. Uh, other things that are accepted. These are some crazy things that we see at our facility. Pool covers. We'll get entire pool covers that will show up. Uh, yard equipment, this is a picture I took the other day, so uh, the issue with that yard equipment, sure it's plastic, sure there's metal, uh, but we're not going to break that all apart and separate it into all the different things, but that was actually in there, it's all dirty and everything too, so that's another issue with contamination. Uh, those juice pizza boxes, what I was telling you about, this one you're not going to use the front, the top or the bottom. You can see the, the food on there, the grease stains on there. Um, everything with that and that old carpet we don't uh, take in the recyclables as well uh, this is the uh just kind of quick i'll run through this cardboard so this is what this stuff can be turned into i know you guys have all these uh these ideas as well but this is some general stuff uh so cardboard gets turned into more cardboard also the wavy stuff within inside cardboard uh, and then kitty litter, I've heard of it getting ground up and turned into kitty litter. Uh, box boards, so those are your cereal boxes, snack, snack boxes, all that different types of stuff gets made into a uh, new box board, puzzle pieces, uh, also the wavy stuff in the cardboard as well. But the puzzle pieces was pretty cool, I thought. I didn't realize that until I started working here. Uh, tin and aluminum, those get uh, sorted by a magnet. So the way they do it at this facility I was telling you about, they have a magnet that rolls like this and uh, the aluminum will keep going and the tin gets picked up and, and put into another, uh, on another escalator to a different area to get sorted. Uh, those get melted down, ground up or melted down one of the two and turned into ingots. Uh, that's what I was talking about. It's like a gold bar, but of tin or aluminum. And then those go to the processor where they melt them down, turn them into more cans uh, and uh, the plastics, the water bottles, uh, those get uh, recycled into carpet, backpacks, sleeping bags, all types of clothing. For our Christmas party last year, we everyone got a sweatshirt that has 40% water bottles. We felt pretty <laughs> cool about that. But, uh, uh, milk jugs, those get uh, in laundry detergent bottles, can be made into uh, playground equipment. Plastic lumber, so there's a decking for homes that a, a lot of those get made into. Uh, that people buy. Margin tubs, cottage cheese containers, yogurt containers, those get made into toothbrushes and razors and then other plastics like sleeve bottles, sunglasses, and even bulletproof vests. Uh, newspapers and magazines, recycled in insulation, wrapping paper, uh, and takeout containers and trays. Uh, again, that prep is to uh, stack or bundle. Uh, do not put into plastic bags and then throw in, and then if you bundle them and tie them together, make sure you get rid of that. So that's what I have. I do have another slide of the, the facility, but I won't show that. So that My name is Steve Noble. Uh, I've been involved with Recycling Jackson for about 20 years now. Our mantra is to give our community opportunities to recycle the hard to recycle stuff. So our focus for about the last 10 or 15 years has been things like latex paint, electronics, light bulbs, batteries. We built 
the organization on being the first place in town to uh, recycle, uh, thanks to a bunch of ladies at the Dollum Center that had the vision. And we operated that way for quite a few years. So we still offer that service. We still take paper, glass, plastic, all that material. Full disclosure, it goes to Granger. So if Granger says no more glass, then we have to do no more glass. Um, to address this lady's question, there is opportunities for glass. Mm -hmm. There's a company in Kalamazoo which is looking for glass. They actually have a statewide contract for the bottle deposit law, and they would take in more glass. Our challenge is we have to get it there. Mm -hmm. And I only have a half ton pickup truck, so it's not going to carry a lot of glass. Mm -hmm. But yes, I would love to explore the opportunities. The idea of glass has not gone away. Our challenge right now is we are trying to absorb some very high costs and trying to stay in business to continue to service our community. Mm -hmm. Anybody, can you tell me where Recycling Jackson is located? Yeah, behind the school and the okay. Home Depot. Yeah, Home Depot. Yeah. Here Recycling Jackson is a nonprofit. We do not get any funding from the county, from the city, from the state. We operate on our own. Everybody tells us and everybody gets mad at us because Jackson is in our name that we must get funding. Well, we don't. The reason we do not get funding is because we used to do a lot of advocacy in the community. And tonight I'm gonna relive that a little. Here is a list, if you are interested, in your city commissioners and your county commissioners. If you are excited enough about getting recycling back into our community, because it is slowly going away, I invite you to take this list and contact your people. We have new people. I know, there's new people, so they need to hear from us. Because if they don't hear from us, then it's not going to be on their radar. We were told a long time ago that we would never get a dollar from the county because we advocate for better recycling services and better trash service. And that's fine. We're still here. That was about 10 years ago when they told us that, and we haven't gone away. So Charles did a very good job of explaining the recycling issues. Um, the biggest thing is clean and dry. Um, We're going to start taking some pictures of the stuff that people bring us. Uh, I guess they think that we're a garbage company uh, because we get... This last Saturday that we were open, we got a whole bunch of mayonnaise jars and ketchup jars and salad dressing jars that hadn't even been rinsed. And it's like, we're a recycling facility, that's garbage, you put it out at the end of your driveway and it goes away. You know, if you're gonna bring material, that's part of the problem nationwide is we treated our recycling stream like it was half garbage mm -hmm. and when China and some of the other countries didn't want our garbage and they cut us off we kind of threw up our arms and said well what are we going to do well you know part of it is just what Nicole's doing education so hopefully all of you guys have learned something tonight and you can take it home um, and and put it in practice but my key thing is no wishful recycling. I had somebody bring in a whole play school play set and argued with us that it was made out of plastic so we should be able to recycle it. And it's like, I'm sorry, it's not recyclable. And I had the lady try to find a recycling symbol on it. She couldn't find it, but it was made out of plastic, so it had to be recycled. So we took it, we put it in our garbage pile, and it'll go to the landfill. First Saturday of the month from nine to one. Um, our plan is to possibly expand. We're getting enough business now that, um, you know, and if any of you are really avid recyclers and you want to volunteer, we're always looking for help. Overall, the markets are very, very soft. Uh, about two years ago, we started collecting any scrap metal that we could get as a source of income. At that time, we were getting about $150 a ton. I think it's down to about $70 a ton right now. So it doesn't even pay for Omnisource to haul our scrap metal to their facility right here in town. 
automotive batteries. We get a lot of automotive batteries because people don't know where else to take them. Right now they're like seven or 10 cents a pound. They used to be 25 or 30 cents a pound. <coughs> um, the market is very, very soft. So, you know, it's, it's a challenging uh, market out there right now for everybody. You know, I, I, the thing that amazes me about our recycling system, and I'm just gonna get back on my soapbox, we collect stuff in Jackson. We send it out on Lansing Avenue to the old Northwest facility. We handle it. We bail it up. We send it all the way to Traverse City. Oh. They sort it and they process it, and then they ship it back out to somewhere else. And it's like, this doesn't make sense to me. You know, why are we handling this stuff so many times? Do you foresee there being like an increase in the infrastructure that's going to be available for recycling these types of materials, or is that like really far in the future? I am hearing some rumors, and they're probably more than rumors, that there's going to be a MRF built in Lansing uh, by a company up there, so that should help. But that's probably, at best, nine months off, probably a year before they can get that up and running. Do you guys have school groups come and volunteer with you, like high school age kids? So there, there could be. Um, we're not opposed to that as long as there's enough supervision. Sure. So, we used to separate it by type. Uh, we're now single stream because, like I said, it goes to Granger. Okay. Um, Does it need visit to be our up? website. We try and keep that up to date. Okay. But know, it doesn't need to be in blue bags. No, like it doesn't need to be in blue okay. bags. We just ask that you don't, like he was talking about, don't tie it up nice and tight, you know, because we got to open the bags and dump them in the bin because we can't just throw the bags in there. So, okay. thanks. Contamination yep. issue is that why allegedly China said no more from you guys, or do you think that there was some other political stuff going on? No, I think primarily it was a contamination issue. I mean, we were sending them, I've heard tales of five, ten percent contamination, so. You know, think of a big bale of plastic and 10% of that is paper or metal or just greasy, you know, plastic containers. So, and then they have to open those bales up and sort them out prior to putting them in their machines to grind them back in to make them into other stuff, so. You think there'd be a way that we could all get things uncontaminated to the point where they would take it back? I think we're working on it. Um, I have seen in, if you're on a really exciting newsletter to read, it's called Recycling News. Um, they are talking about some of the Chinese and, and other companies from Southeast Asia that are now building plants in the United States. Um, and so as those come on board, you know, they'll be able to handle. And the purpose of that is simply to get the contamination out before it's sent overseas to be reused. That's that's their way of solving the contamination problem. Because we can't seem, I mean, we've been trying recycling jacks that are around for 35 years and we haven't solved the education situation. If you look at the mantra, reduce, reuse, recycle, recycle's at the bottom. You know, it's it's up to each of us to when you go into the store, don't buy that thing that's, you know, wrapped in plastic and in a cardboard box. You know, try and shop smart. I get a little angry with people that are mad at us because we're not going to take their trunk full of wine bottles. Well, guess what? There's wine in cardboard boxes now. It's really good wine. You know, I drink it myself. That's the way you drink it. Um, but then you're, you've got a cardboard box to recycle and a plastic liner instead of a glass bottle. We still take as much metal as we can get in. We are now asking only because our downstream source that if you bring us cans, try and crush them because they take up less space. Um, because otherwise they have to crush them and I mean they have the equipment to do it but it's stuff like that it's it's volume reduction if we can get you know three times more in a bin then our cost to haul that bin is the same but we're making more money so we don't like to ship a lot of air even though it's just across town and you know the same thing it's it you he was talking about the cardboard boxes 
just take a few minutes and break them down, flatten them out, bring them in. You know, that's the best way to go. When we used to do a lot of advocacy, especially our county commissioners would say, well, we're not hearing from anybody, so why are we going to step up and do anything? So just shoot them an email and say, you know, now that Recycling Jackson is not taking glass, what am I supposed to do with my glass? The county is governed by a solid waste plan. It's required by the state. And I don't know, two, three years ago, we revamped our solid waste plan. Well, we really didn't do anything for it. We opened it up and we left it as what they call free market recycling. So this county or the city or nobody requires anybody to do anything. It's just up to the service providers. And that's what you get. You get what we are right now. Um, you know, I'm not a big government guy, even though I work for the government and I'm a big guy. Um, but there are roles for government and one of them is to make sure that their residents have the services they want. So take a moment, call your county commissioner, your city commissioner, wherever you live, and let them know. I mean, if you don't want better recycling services, that's fine. We're going to be here for the next, you know, 10, 15 years, as long as I can pick up TVs and electronics and haul them around our site. Um, but, you know, someday we may not have the services, so we should stand up for what we want right now. So, yeah. You uh, talk e-waste over there, yep. and I have my old VCR stuck in the corner of my garage. I bring it over to you. Is it better to bring it over intact or pull boards out of it to make it easier for me? No, because there's some metal and there's other things in there. We send it to a facility up in Grand Rapids that'll tear it down and, and recycle all that material. So we had 23 drop-off sites around this county. You know, those were the good old days. We worked really hard with Northwest at that time to get those set up. And people just abused the hell out of them. Oh, yeah. so, and that's okay. why they all got shut down. And it's like, you know, the, the haulers would go out there on Monday and they would spend two or three hours picking up all the stuff and putting it in the bin because people were too lazy to put it in the bin. We all need to do our part to educate everybody around us. As well as calling like state and representatives and calling company representatives and customer relations representatives for any products that you routinely purchase, you know, maybe look at if it has a recycling symbol, if it doesn't, call the company because companies listen to people and there are a lot of large companies listen to their customers and they want to do the right thing because they want to continue to sell their stuff to us and if you threaten not to buy it anymore and go somewhere else they probably will make the changes where on msu do you take class the msu recycling center is on farm lane um, yeah, it's right by the surplus store. If you uh, say there's a couple options in town, um, you can bring it to us and it will go on our bin. We just leave it in the bag so it doesn't make a mess. I think you guys have a separate collection for shredded paper? For uh, like office the, paper? It's the same way here, yeah. With the shredded, you can put it into the, the paper bin, but. Uh, at our Lansing drop-off center, we do have a separate bin that we switch. Right. There is a facility on South Airport Road. It's called MDK Recycling. They are a paper shredder. Uh, they do it for commercial and industrial customers, but they will take drop-offs from you and I and everybody else. So, when you uh, do your blue bag, you can put shredded paper in that. Uh, in a separate bag, into the blue bag? Into the, just put it into the blue bag. Just like in, confetti, in, like loose? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's fine. Yep, and then, like I said, in, at our Lansing facility, we will have a separate container that you actually put the shredded stuff in. So, it goes, right, in it goes into single stream, and if you don't mind, uh, We've been talking about the MRF so much that I do have a video of a MRF, and I want you. That would be great. So you guys can really understand. So this is just uh, this is American waste. It is up in Traverse City. It's it's not a great thing that it's up there, but you'll see it costs uh, so thirty million dollar replacement value. It's a five acre facility. Uh, it's custom engineered for for what we're going to have. So MRF or MRF is material recovery facility. Uh, these are some of the regions. The blue is where the materials go to that facility, where they come from. 
Uh, this is Signal Street, right? This looks like a, a whole pile of trash. Uh, but by the end of it, it's going to be separated into each and every single uh, different material. And that's why MRFs are so cool, but there's a lot of technology involved, which is why they're also so expensive. Uh, so you'll start at the tipping floor, which is uh, this picture over here. Uh, eventually I have a video coming up. This is what I want you to see. So that's going to go up this conveyor, but here's where it starts. It goes into that tipping floor, and then it's going up to the conveyor. The next step, you can see some people start to sort the trash seal, the bags and everything, all the trash that's in there. That's what they're going to start trying to get out immediately. So they're going to get out large pieces of rigid plastic, the trash, uh, metal scraps are pulled out too, to protect the system from damage. So this is one of the issues that we see in terms of contamination that Steve was mentioning. Now the next step is spinning disc. This, this will break glass that is in the system. Uh, that glass, anything that's two inches or less, will fall through the bottom. Everything else will continue to go on to the next step. So you can see small things going down, bigger stuff is continuing to move up. Oops. So here we have our uh, cardboard separator. Uh, there's, this is another rubber disc uh, option. So you can see the big rubber disc, everything else is fall, falling through. But the flat, light paper cardboard uh, continues to move on to the next conveyor. And you can actually see over here, it's going over to this side, to that conveyor, where another gentleman is actually sorting out anything that's bad that might have gotten through. And this is where it ends up. So they have a pile of all cardboard, uh, you'll see here. So that must be the top of a pizza box, because he would have got it if it wasn't. I see. <laughs> okay, uh, another rubber disc. Uh, it, pulled a, it pulls the flat 2D material up and over the top. The round 3D containers uh, can't make it up, so they tumble backwards. So this is some pretty cool stuff. So see most of the stuff, uh, paper and everything, 2D things, flat things are going up and over. Everything else is falling down to the bottom, uh, going to another conveyor for another system. Uh, Pre-metal sort, so this is going to be uh, your metal uh, cans, aluminum cans. He's trying to get some of the garbage out that's coming through that is in a, a can. So it goes on to the next step which is going to be the magnet I was talking about. And you'll see this, it's really cool. You can see it going around, it's sucked up. and it's sucking up that tin. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's dropping it over here in another, uh, in a container that's taking it to another conveyor belt where it goes and gets separated there. So then we have this electromagnetic field, it's called an eddy, it has eddy currents, and that repels aluminum. So this is how they separate the aluminum. So what you'll do is you'll watch it. Some things will get kind of shot over. And this is kind of, uh, this is just a, the stuff that's coming up after that. So this is what's left. There shouldn't be any metal involved in that. This is the plastics. This is the coolest thing. This is a laser that's reading those plastics. And it can tell what each plastic is and it'll, it'll let it keep going, it'll shoot everything that's not out of it with a brush of air. It shoots that to a different conveyor too. So it, it just completely separates. This is, uh, when we talk about education, Eagle spent about $2.5 million this past year on these recycling raccoons. So we, uh, we do our own training, but we always tell people to check this out too. It's recyclingraccoons.org. Uh, and it just gives you more information on what should and shouldn't go in the recycling stream. Their goal is to clean it up too. Somebody asked about infrastructure. We gave them a ha almost a half million dollar grant to add additional equipment to this facility to help further sort so that, that we can get a clean waste stream. Yeah. So, you know. We being the state of Michigan. Yeah. We're a little slow on the uptake, but you know, we. Thank you to our legislature last, last year. They gave us almost $20 million to help further recycling. So you're going to see some 
it's going to take a while, but you're going to see some improvements. So, yeah. and then these folks are taking care of milk jugs, uh, cleaning those up, and uh, separating those. So again, they separate these separately because specific uh, processors want just milk jugs yeah. to make the, the playground equipment and to make the, uh, the decking and all sorts of different things. This is the paper, but they're taking out, you'll see plastic bags are coming in there. A lot of people, again, are just dumping the whole plastic bag in there and try to not to do that if possible. This is, uh, this is the end, this is the bales. So we have a baler that bales about 1,500 to two, uh, one ton, 2,000 pound bales. <laughs> and this one is crazy. It's just nonstop material. And these are huge bales. This is great stuff to see. Uh, you will see a, uh, a pop or a container coming up that shouldn't be in there, that Bud Light there. Bud Light, but, yeah. That Bud Light container would be considered contamination in that bale of cardboard. And if there's enough of it in there, then the mill where that stuff goes to be processed would reject it. Right. So, so you can take very small amounts, he's right, and then uh, you get that. 1% that's left over is actually like plastics that aren't recyclable, uh, papers, different materials like that. They actually burn it and make it into a fuel that runs their facility. It actually lights up their facility. So they reuse the materials that are left over. And 90% of 30,000 tons processed annually is the uh, cardboard, uh, cardboard material and paper. The China relationship, in 2017, they warned us, you're sending contaminated material over. In 2018, we didn't change our ways. We didn't fix that stream. So 66% uh, of America's recyclables that went over there no longer could go over there. Then we tried to go to Malaysia. They didn't want it either. Uh, fortunately for us, we use this facility. 80% uh, stays in Michigan and 20% stays in the Midwest. However, there was a huge drop in commodity price per bale, which you'll see several municipalities closing because they can't afford to do it anymore. And uh, you know, thank you to you and, and for us too, we're, we're very happy to keep that robust attempt at uh, uh, keeping the recycling facilities because it's the right thing to do and it's, a, it's a great for the environment. So we want to want to maintain those uh, opportunities. But this is what it does. It turns it into all these, separates, takes that pile of stuff, and by the end, this is what you get. So that saves some time. There's more pictures of what that stuff turns into, but I wanted you to see what a MRF is because we talk about it and you guys have no idea what it is, but now you can. What is PET? I mean, is it PET is plastic. P-E-T? Oh. Yeah. So number one plus? P-E-T is number... I think it's number one plus. I think it is number one plus. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that the, a couple of slides ago that 90% of what's recycled recycled is the cardboard coming out of the Paper and cardboard. Paper and cardboard. Is that because that's what most people recycle or is it because that's it's what be, It's recycle? because that's what people use the most. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the Amazon effect. Cardboard, is pa everything is packaged pretty much in cardboard, more than likely. They're not everything, but most things are. Um, one thing that I would share about the library is that we do also accept book donations that are in good condition. Again, that wet, moldy book that maybe sat in your basement and got a little water damage, that would be contaminated where we wouldn't want it in the library, and we also can't recycle it. So that would be trash. I want to thank again our wonderful presenters, Nicole, Steve, and Charles for sharing all this great information with us.